Okay, so we've got this um, power torque carby over here. So I'm going to show you guys the basic way this thing is put together. So we've got this brass washer, which goes on this post here. This is the uh, cam. And basically the way these things work is very straightforward. Um, your poppet valve comes up through this cam arrangement. You've got this, I guess you'd call it a cam plate. There's no description of it in the book. And we've got this diaphragm which goes that way down. It's, it goes over this barb. So basically what happens is, oh, and you've also got a spring here. And basically what happens is, it sits like this, and when you, when you move the throttle, I'm gonna drop everything on the ground. When you move the throttle, basically what happens is you've got, this is your cam here. So the puppet valve, for the puppet valve to open, it's, it's basically gotta go down like that. Cause if I, if I put this valve in, which is sort of a bit tricky when your hands are bigger than the, the hole. So what happens is basically I don't know what you guys can see, you don't have to bear with me, but you can see the valve opens like that. So going down would be open. So what happens is um, in the slow position, so that would be slow, when you, when you open the throttle, this, this plate, which is pushing the diaphragm and the poppet valve up in the closed position, this drops into this, this is the fast or full throttle if you like so that's full throttle and then when you when this rotates with the cable being withdrawn it then goes to, to slow speed and you know in the shutdown position so we're going to assemble this carby and my lovely assistant will tell me if I'm buggering this video up so you don't have to put the poppet in first so you've got this bit here and that coincides with a bit here, which you probably can't see. Um, and that's the, where the end of the throttle cable goes in. So we've got our brass spacer on this post. And we're now going to, we're going to install this cam. So yeah, you need it close up really. Um, it's zoomed in a fair bit, but so basically that's in the position to, um, I might actually, what I'll do is I'll include a close up photo of this, but that's when you open the throttle, it moves around like that. So, so that's installed. So I'll, I'll include a, um, a close up of some of this stuff because yeah, it's, it's really just, really I can show you guys assembling this thing and that's fine, well and good. But then what needs to happen is um, once it's fully assembled, putting the throttle cable in can be challenging if you're not sure what you're actually doing. So we've got these three legs here, and you can't see them because they're black, of course. We've got these grooves, or channels if you want to call them that. And we're gonna sit these in here like that. So, if I um, get my fat fingers in here, which is a little bit awkward. So if we go up to the camera again, now what you can see, when you open the throttle, of course that normally has a spring, it's, it moves down, allowing the valve to open. So when you close the throttle, this is what happens. So we rotate the, poorly rotate, I admit, because it's not assembled, we rotate the cam only. So yeah, you can see what's happening anyway. It's, this is a fairly clever arrangement. So you need it in this position, which that's the start position so you can get the cable in. So if I go back to here, the bit you couldn't see is the fact that maybe I can get a pointer. So this um, channel here, this is very awkward by the way. So yeah, I'll show you a close up of that. So anyway, we've got it to this stage. The next stage is this spring. And then, yeah, we're gonna just give the diaphragm a wipe on our shirt because the Esky didn't get a wipe down first, which is not very good. So what I did to clean this carby is just, I didn't use hardcore solvents. You could use petrol if you wish, but I suggest a, just a, a scrubbing brush like you use for the dishes. And um, 
just dishwashing liquid. Now, if you wanted to, you could put a bit of um, like grease on the end of this poppet valve, and that would mean it would slip in easier. But we're not going to do that, so we're going to push this um, onto there. So that's installed. It just sits over that barb, and we've got this like keyhole plate. That's a term that I pretty much just made up on the spot. I'm sure there is a correct term, but I'm not really sure what it is. So this is going to go over the end of that barb, like that. So that's installed. So now what we've got is, um, you can see the spring that the spring that got put in. What it does is it returns this to the closed position. So that's where this is right now is idle. So while you've got it in this state, grasp this plate here, and yeah, you, you can't see it, I don't think, but the, um, the the little letter C gets rotated to the slot in there, which you may not be, able, you maybe you can just see. I can't see what the LCDs are. Yeah, you can see it just. So rotate C. Now that gives it a different fuel air mixture. That's the purpose of that. Um, either obtain a new diaphragm or make sure this diaphragm is, hasn't got a hole in it. Before we put this cap on, we're not going to lose the bits. We're going to refer to the engine and make sure that the vacuum line for that, which by the way is your governor, is um, in the correct position. So for this particular engine, and there is a slight variance, see this, it, it will not go on in absolutely any position because these lugs stick out. But for this engine, I think what we're going to do is have it just so it's pointing down slightly like that. So, don't forget your spring. This is for your governor. If you don't put this in, it will just idle all the time. So make sure your diaphragm is... Make sure when you put this cap on, it gets pushed down squarely. And this diaphragm is where it should be, because if the diaphragm is like that, you know, pushed in, it's just going to rev its nuts off. It's not going to be governed. So the point of that, this this diaphragm system has a little, what they call a vacuum button in the bottom of the crankcase, and the flywheel um, fins, cooling fins or fan, whizzing past that button creates a, a low pressure. And that's proportional to the engine speed, so that's what actually dictates how fast or slow the engine goes on full throttle. So now we're going to, yep, our diaphragm's where it should be. So, if we get that right. I mean, there are witness marks here from where this has been. Like, there's been a line or something rubbing against that, which is, uh, it's been the decompressor line. So where it's been is basically like that. It's been pointing, yeah, straight out pretty much, but I'm just gonna give it a slight downward angle. We're happy with where our diaphragm is. So, you gotta make sure you push it down firmly. Um, so, we've got a little bit of throttle at the moment. It depends where that cam is. It, it, the cam's in the basically in the start position, which gives it just a little bit of throttle. Now, if we rotate that around, which is a pain because you, you gotta rotate it back, we get full throttle. Bring it down. Oh, yep. So what I'm going to show you guys is... I need a bit of fuel line, but... Oops. So that verifies that it's working properly. You don't have to use your mouth. A bit of fuel line's better, but this is clean. It's not out of the engine dirty. So you can hear and see that when I, when I suck into this port, it's closing the throttle. So we're going to make sure that C's align with the spray hole, which is the technical term for this, which it is. So now what we're going to do, because I was demonstrating to you guys, I've rotated this. 